Two new legendary archer commanders have just landed in Rise of Kingdoms, and let me tell you, Cyrus the Great and Nebuchadnezzar look absolutely stunning. With these first impressions, we'll evaluate whether or not we think that they can take down the unconquerable, unbeatable Zenobia. So stick around in this video, my friends, for a rundown on whether or not these archers can give Zenobia a run for her money. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms, and these are going to be our first impressions for these brand spanking new legendary archer commanders. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. These commanders are going to be necessary, perhaps, to take down Zenobia. We need to do that evaluation. The first one we're going to look at is Nebuchadnezzar, and by the way, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm 99% sure I am, but I can't wait to see how other content creators do that. If we look in, this is going to come from the Mightiest Governor. So this is a commander you're going to have to win from the Mightiest Governor. It is going to be really far along in the Mightiest Governor cycle. We are just now wrapping up, I guess, the Zenobia cycle. Technically, Zenobia is still showing up for our Mightiest Governor, but I suspect that she is going to get swapped out in this Mightiest Governor for Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar, hoo -hoo, oh my goodness, this archer is looking really spicy. They are an archer conquering and skill commander. Three all very relevant talent trees, which is promising. Their active skill is kind of nutty. 1,500 damage factor is reasonable, but it hits up to five targets. That's huge. Depending on the radius here, if it's like Ethelfled, this could be out of control. If it's like other commanders we've had more like a Kusunoki sort of a range, then okay. Like, still good, but not insane. But just think about those big brawls in the center for the Ark of Osiris. Yeah, hitting five targets. I mean, this commander is almost guaranteed to be a snap and clued. It almost doesn't matter what the rest of their kit is, but spoiler alert, <laughs> it's really good. Now, the amount of damage you deal to each target is reduced based on hitting multiple targets. So the more targets you hit, the less damage you do to any one target, but your total damage is going way up by virtue of hitting lots of things. The next skill makes it so you have 30% increase defense. I love defense, very good stat, and 15% march speed. Amazing. Amazing second skill. It's a huge amount of stats. The march speed is absolutely incredible. I mean, if we look at some of the original commanders that were released into the game, we've got 10% march speed and 20% attack. Over here, we're talking 15% march speed, 30% defense. Very, very solid. Third skill, when this commander leads a rally. So I guess they're going to be a rally commander, which I wasn't expecting. They do area of effect damage, right? Like they're going to be a rally leader. Uh, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. But when they lead a rally attack, they can be, I think, the primary or secondary for that. Sometimes the language is a little confusing. I think they can be the primary. I think they can be the secondary. Both are fine. They just have to be the captains of the rally, I think. Counterattack damage is increased by 30%. Now, that is a lot of anti-swarm technology right there. And incoming attacks have a 10% chance. So that's when you're getting attacked. When you are getting normal attacked, you have a 10% chance to deal direct damage to the attacker. Damage factor 800. It's sort of like a Wu Zetian effect there. And you reduce their march speed by 30% for three seconds. Wow, you're not getting away. And that is a five-second cooldown. See, the cooldown kind of sucks. So at most, this happens once every five seconds. You deal 800 damage factor. Even if just the single target you're facing is the garrison, like that's really very, very good. I'm pretty happy with that, quite frankly. Also, at some point, my background changed to red and I have no clue when that was, but whatever, let's just keep going. The next skill is gonna make it so that you do 15% more damage and each of your normal attacks has a 10% chance to reduce the target's rage by 100, wow. Internal cooldown on that of five seconds, so can only trigger once every five seconds. So the name of the game with Nebuchadnezzar is that there are a ton of things they've caught that have an internal cooldown, and if you get them all lined up, that seems pretty good to me. Let's get a look at the expertise skill. The expertise skill makes it so that your active skill now deals an extra 500 damage factors to the primary target. That is very good. If we look at some of the original commanders in the game. Uh, Boudica, when she gets her expertise skill, is getting 400 additional damage factor. 
When we look at Julius Caesar, which is perhaps more appropriate because he's a legendary tier, he gets an additional 400 damage factor on the active skill. So the fact that we're getting 500 extra damage factor onto the active skill from Nebuchadnezzar is really very, very good. I'm pretty psyched at everything I see here. There's a moderate amount of anti-swarm technology due to the ability to do damage to the folks that are hitting you and the counterattack. I think there's a moderate amount of anti-swarm just because it's got a lot of defense. They've got area of effect damage and also march speed, so you can use them in the open field. Nebuchadnezzar seems like a very versatile commander who honestly is just missing some staying power. So when paired with a commander like Ramses, who's going to have a lot of defense, a lot of restoration of health as well, I think that could be a really solid pairing if you put them together. There's an attack boost here. Skill damage taken is reduced. You have archer attack, march speed boost as well, healing and defense boost. Yeah, I think the Ramses is a very solid pair, specifically for open field and for rallying. I do also like the idea of the YSG. YSG elevates skill damage by 50%. That will work really well for the active skill, but also on the third skill, it is going to benefit from that 50% increased damage. So this does seem really good. Things like the Pendant of Eternal Night, which gives 5% skill damage, that's an accessory, is really good, I think, on this commander because he's doing area of effect damage, hitting lots of targets, and he's got this additional ability that does skill damage. I think that this commander could be just the thing we needed. The rage reduction here is just really fierce. Let's get a look at the next commander here which is Cyrus the Great, and then talk about them as a pairing and some other potential pairings that could be really gangbuster. So Cyrus the Great is an archer versatility and skill commander. Fun fact, many of the versatility commanders have come from the Wheel of Fortune, and Cyrus the Great appears to be no exception to that near rule. It's not exactly a rule, but if we go in and we look at some of the other commanders in the game that are versatility commanders, we see that, okay, Harold breaks the rule, but Alexander the Great comes from the Wheel of Fortune, as does Edward of Woodstock, as does Khan. ton of versatility commanders have come from Wheel of Fortune, and here is yet another in the form of Cyrus the Great. The active skill makes it so that the current target, so it's single target damage, takes 1,400 damage factor and takes 20% additional damage for three seconds. To me, this screams for this commander to be the primary commander to boost the damage for the active skill of the secondary commander. That would be my off-the-cuff impression. The next skill makes it so that archer units led by this commander gain a solid 15% march speed and 30% attack. With march speed, generally I'm inclined to believe the commander will be good in the field. The only downside I see here is that for a field commander, specifically for Ark of Osiris, or big brawls at, uh, you know, Altar of Darkness, I'd really like to see area of effect damage, which they do not have for their active skill. But I think there'll be a surprise for us here. When we look at the third skill, when troops led by this commander consist of only archers. So this is a very major constraint. People mess up what they send to rallies all the freaking time. But if you can manage to get all archers or you bring all archers in your normal march, their normal attacks gain a 10% chance to deal additional damage over time. Ooh, 250 damage factor. For three seconds. Wow. Okay. I see why both of these commanders are skill-based commanders as one of their talent trees. So that's a solid 750 damage factor over three seconds. Actually, technically not as good as the 800 damage factor we saw on Nebuchadnezzar. But hey, let's just keep going here and read the rest of this ability. So you have a 10% chance from your normal attacks to do 750 damage factor. And while that damage over time effect is in play, the target deals... 20%, a boost upward to 40%, 40%, reduced skill damage. Very interesting. Interesting in the open field, although when I think about what people are garrisoning with, are there a lot of garrison commanders that elevate skill damage? I mean, I know Sun Tzu does. I know YSG does. But skill damage specifically? Interesting. It's interesting. I don't hate it. I don't love it. The effect can trigger at most once every five seconds. That seems to be the norm these days. The final skill here, the Cyrus Cylinder, when attacked on the map. So that means when you're being attacked on the map, so not in a resource node, not in a garrison, but pretty much everywhere else, when attacked on the map, troops led by this commander have a 10% chance. So when you receive a normal attack, 10% chance to deal circle area of effect 
for up to three targets for two seconds, 300 damage factor. That's 600 damage factor to an upwards of three targets. So that's 1,800 extra damage factor. And this can trigger at most once every five seconds. So it turns out he's good for an AOE brawl too. Wow. And by the way, I want to call your attention to something here. If you thought skill damage was good, here's the, here's the clue. Here's skill damage. Here's skill damage. And here's skill damage. Funny that this commander kind of counters himself. Because he makes it so that the skill damage doesn't work. Are we going to see rallies with Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar? And then you counter rally with Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar? I don't know. I'm just shooting from the hip. But there is a ton of skill damage here. And actually, this makes me feel really good about plus skill damage items or talents. You should really be trying to get those stacked up on these commanders. But let's look at the expertise. When using an active skill, archer units led by this commander gain 20% increased attack and 20% increased defense for three seconds. And they gain, oh my God, an additional 50 rage per second. So that's 150 rage. Oh boy, there's the built-in rage engine. There's the rage engine right there. You want a rage engine on this commander. Why? Because the faster you fire off your active skills, the more frequently you get rage, which means you fire off your active skills even more. So talents like rejuvenate, do crazy amounts of double duty here because you can go faster and faster and faster and it builds that rage engine, which I think makes commanders very, very powerful. In terms of pairings for Cyrus the Great specifically, I do like the idea of Ramses because Ramses also wants a rage engine. The reason he wants a rage engine is that every time he fires off his active skill, you're going to apply a health immunity or I guess heal immunity effect. And that's from, again, the expertise skill. So if you use Ramses as a secondary, I think that could be a really solid choice. And you will be elevating the damage that is dealt, which I think is also very, very solid. There's a defense reduction here, the march speed, the skill damage taken. I mean, yeah, Ramses paired with these commanders or those two commanders paired together is just off the cuff looking really, really good. I also think that Esong could be very, very good with Cyrus. And the reason that I like that combination is purely for that 50% increased skill damage. There's three skills. Count them three skills that the commander is going to benefit from that on. So that seems just really exceptional to me. Boosting three skills with the 50% skill damage is amazing. I do worry a little bit about these new commanders being countered somewhat by a commander like William. I think William gains a lot of relevance in this new flavor of the meta. Because guess what? These are archers, and cavalry does counter archers. But what's more is that William's active skill makes it so that buffs that improve skill damage cannot take effect. So William is a soft counter to what these commanders are doing because he makes it so that, hey, if you are trying to boost the skill damage on them, that's not going to work very well. You'll notice there were two commanders that I ignored. That is Edward and Tamaris. Edward and Tamaris, they work well together but they both are doing things very different than what these commanders are doing. Edward needs to be the primary. This is a commander you also want to be the primary, and you really want to fire off your active skill more frequently, not less frequently, because of Edward's really high rage cost for using the active skill. So I just, I don't think Edward is the play. I don't think that Tamaris is the play. She also wants you to have kind of a prolonged skill cycle for using that active skill, whereas these commanders, they really want you to fire that off as fast as possible. Tamaris wants to stack poison. None of these commanders are stacking poison or making that a particularly profitable venture from her active skill. Even though, even though I will say, the thing that does make Tamaris kind of interesting is that, hey, if you were to pair with Cyrus the Great, if you were to pair with Cyrus the Great, there are three skills doing skill damage here. So you do get a lot of benefit from the Tamaris debuff, but I'm not convinced that they are a most optimal pairing. And in terms of putting these two commanders together, I have to think the Cyrus primary with the Nebuchadnezzar secondary will be really good. If you think the Conquering Tree is absolutely critical, then the Nebuchadnezzar will be the primary and it wouldn't be the end of the world for the Cyrus the Great to be the secondary. And in terms of builds, I really do think that we can fall back on some classic archer skill builds. And really, I would focus on more skill primary and then archer to generate lots of rage. But if I just give you a couple things that I think shooting from the hip would be really very exceptional, here is an Esong build 
that some flavor of this I think would be really good. You might consider ditching full quiver and the archer attack point over here to get latent power. I've got a few extra points floating around over here that could be pretty good to put elsewhere as well. But because both of these commanders are doing so much skill damage, I think that you might consider a build that's more in the realm of something like this. This is more of a field build. You could mix things up a little bit here in terms of the points, but something like this could go very, very well. Heavy into the skill tree. You have to pick up Razor Sharp. It's nearly mandatory. I love the 8% extra damage for the primary and secondary commanders, and it's only active skill damage. I get it, but it's 8% more active skill damage, and they both do a lot of skill damage. These four points off to the side over here are sort of flex. You might go into latent power. You might consider, if you think you're going to be the bigger skill damage player on the field, going into naked rage. It's going to make you more squishy, but these commanders do so much skill damage. We're used to commanders where buffing skill damage improves one or two skills, but we're talking about five skills total between Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus. That is really unusual and I think also really exceptional in terms of value that you're getting from the skill tree. I actually think for the first time, we really have some skill tree commanders since we got Esong and, and maybe since we got, you know, Sun Tzu that really are embodying the spirit of what a skill tree commander is trying to do. And okay, maybe I'll give a little hat tip to Guan. Guan kind of embodies what a skill tree commander ought to do, which is just huge amounts of skill damage. No fancy, you know, debuffs as the primary thing they do or healing, just raw skill damage. So can these commanders take down the indomitable Zenobia? That is a question that I'm left wondering. And to do that, like, let's just review very quickly her skills. She has a heal, she boosts the damage that is being dealt, and she boosts health, which is really amazing. In addition, she's going to make it so that she boosts her normal attack damage and reduces the normal attack damage taken. She's going to increase her health and attack and deal more damage to rallied armies. She's also going to do a lot of skill damage herself. And in addition, the expertise skill here, I'm just going to make it so you heal some more stuff. You know... Nothing in the kit of these commanders is really directly attacking what the Zenobia is doing. Nothing I saw here is really directly countering what Zenobia does. And what's more, I have some concern that because Zenobia is a support tree commander, that she is going to have a lot of ways of dealing with the fact that these commanders are going to do lots of skill damage. The support tree on the Zenobia gives her just a, a real plentiful number of options to deal with skill damage, whether it's, hey, impregnable from the garrison tree, whether it's loose formation, reducing skill damage taken by 9%, or even emergency protection. After you take skill damage, there's a chance you can reduce skill damage taken by even more. So because these commanders are doing five different abilities that do skill damage, yeah, emergency protection is just a really good talent, and it's very much playing into the strengths of Zenobia. And what's more, I start to wonder if a commander like Wu Zetian is going to gain a ton of favor as a garrison commander, in part because she has some of the very best ways as well to deal with skill damage. The fourth skill, when you're leading a garrison of a city or stronghold, all troops led by this commander reduce skill damage taken by 15%, and they have a 50% chance to increase defense by 20% for three seconds whenever you take skill damage. So, I mean, Wu Zetian is super designed to counter exactly what Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus are doing. So these new commanders are going to have some tough stuff to deal with. What do you think about these new commanders and how well they will be able to take down Zenobia? If you haven't seen, we released a video earlier today about the indomitable Zenobia. We were unable to conquer anything we paired her with. Anything we paired her with, she slayed. She's amazing. So I don't know if these commanders will do the job. And what I was also surprised, by the way, to not see when reset happened today was I didn't see a Cyber Monday bundle. For the last two years, we've had a Cyber Monday bundle. Maybe it'll show up sometime soon. I'll have a card up in the top if you'd like to see what that Cyber Monday bundle was in the past. Also, in other news, we see that Lubu has returned as was expected based on his timer. And the problem I see here is that it's the exact same bundle every single week. So do I want to pay 20 bucks for 10 sculptures every week for however many weeks this is? 
I man, I'm probably just not going to work on Lubu. I am probably just not going to buy this because the rest of this bundle I find really unimpressive. For the 10 sculptures, it's a pretty expensive pickup. So I probably will be passing on these Lubu sculptures, but I don't know. If we think about this a different way, if we think about this a different way, you know, the number of sculptures that you get from a Mightiest Governor victory is 180. So how many weeks of this are we going to have? Something like eight more weeks. So 80 sculptures. I don't, 80 sculptures for the price for 160 bucks. I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's cheaper than like Living Legend, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to think on this one. The reports I've seen so far on Lubu have not been all that impressive. I'll have a card up in the top if you'd like to check out that video as well. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor. Throw a like on the video. It supports the channel. It's a huge help, and it's 100% free to you. Also, consider subscribing. Smash that subscribe button, baby. 100% free to you. And why would you want to miss out on the latest, greatest Rise of Kingdoms news designed to help you get value and smash your enemies? Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.